The, so the next speaker is uh, Shay Moran, who's going to talk about the optimal approximation factor and density estimation. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. So this is a joint work with uh, Olivier Busquet and with uh, Daniel Kane, who is over there. Okay, so yeah, so, so here is some high level uh, motivation. So many scientific tasks, they boil down to, to the following meta task where we have some phenomenon P we want to model. And our goal is to find some concise mathematical um, model that, you know, that models of observation from P. And in many contexts also, observations are, are ra randomized. They, they are drawn from some random source. So let us informally define that Q models P if one cannot rely re distinguish reliably between observations from P and Q. Okay, so one question we may ask is, given two candidate models, Q1 and Q2, can we automatically, algorithmically, determine which one is a better explanation for P, for this phenomenon? So distribution learning provides an abstract, perhaps somewhat simplistic, uh, framework in which we can study this question. So let's be more formal. So imagine we have Q1 and Q2, which are both two known distributions. We know everything about them over some domain X. And we have sample access to some unknown distribution over X. And the goal is uh, sample as few points from the unknown distribution and to determine which of the QIs is closer to P. Now, when I say closer, we need to determine, to decide what metric we use. And in this uh, paper, in this work, we, uh, we chose the uh, total variation. So uh, what is total variation? So I'm sure that most of you know. So you know there are three standard definitions. L1 distance is one of them. But the one that is most convenient for, uh, for this context is the, this variational uh, definition, which is the supremum of the, of the differences between the assigned measures. And the reason it's, uh, it's relevant to this context is because what it really captures is the max advantage, is the best test to distinguish whether a given sample is taken from P or from Q. So if two distributions are closed in total variation, it means that no test can distinguish them, which, which follows the intuition from the first slide. By the way, there is very interesting history for, this, for, this, uh, for total variation. Um, Camille Jordan is the one from Jordan Curve, and Stanislav Sachs is a very, I recommend you all to read about him in Wikipedia. Very interesting life. Okay. So here is the first time I heard about this problem. This is what I thought. Well, we simply estimate both the total variation of Q1 and P and total variation of Q2 and P, and then we just output the minimize, the one that minimizes the estimate. And what is the problem with this approach? I see many faces, okay, so the problem is that we cannot estimate total variation distance. We have a, in the definition, we have a supremum over an exponential number of events or if even infinite in, in infinite domains. So even if it's even worse than this, so we cannot even determine whether a, a, an unknown distribution is uniform over the zero one interval or is just uniform over a finite set of the zero one interval. And the reason is the Bradley paradox. So there is no chance to estimate the total variation distance. We cannot even distinguish whether it's zero or one. And then the next th th thought maybe is that it's impossible to learn with respect to total variation. But amazingly, um, Yatrakos found this very simple algorithm and the, and the analysis is also very simple and he shows that it is in fact possible to determine which of the Q1 or Q2 is closer to P up to this multiplicative factor of three. And uh, as I said, like the, the argument is extremely simple. The reason we have three there, the, the most basic reason is because there are two applications of the triangle inequality. But, um, okay. So this is the case for two distributions. Now for more than two distributions, in the book by the Boyan Lugosi, you can find the following theorem that given any set 
family of distributions, finite family of distributions, one can find uh, one of them, which is at most three opt plus little o of one. So we can properly learn any finite class of distributions up to this three factor. And again, the question is whether this factor of three is necessary, and that was the starting point of our, of our, of our work. And a work by Mahala Nabis and Stefan Kovic, they showed that for this specific algorithm, three is indeed necessary. And our first main result is that not only for this algorithm, the factor three is necessary, but for any proper algorithm, any algorithm which outputs one of the QIs must exhibit a factor of three for some choice of uh, target distribution. Okay, so never mind how the quantifiers are exactly put, but this is the message. Now how about improper algorithms? Does it help? Can we win this uh, factor of three? And again, very maybe counterintuitively, the answer is yes. There exists an improper algorithm that achieves factor two, and moreover, two is information theoretically the best you can hope to achieve in this generality. Now, as you can see, the, the sample complexity bounds are kind of strange, and um, the reason is that we, we use this adaptive data analysis, and I conjecture that uh, there should be a simpler analysis of our algorithm that gives you a much better uh, sample complexity bounds. Uh, okay, so, uh, so I will not talk about the proof, but you can come to the poster and I will happily discuss it with you. And yes, and yeah, I think, yeah. And that's it, thank you. Yes, yes. No, no, so the, imp okay, so the question was what do we mean by improper algorithms? So we have a finite set of distributions, and then we have a target distribution which is not necessarily a member of this finite set, and the goal is to compete, to find a distribution that is close to the target, in a way that competes with the best distribution in class. So for example, we can take a mixture of the distributions and uh, You can have one more question, yes. Statistical queries. Our algorithm only uses statistical queries, but I suspect that uh, you can improve it if you have uh, better access. So yeah, it's very, it can also be made differentially target and uh, No, no, of course it's a query. You just needed to estimate this uh, Yatrakov set, this Chekhov set. You need to know the QI, but you just need statistical queries, so the set, you know, the Yatrakov set is just fine. Yeah, so the QIs are known. You know everything about the QIs, and the access to P is only via statistical queries. Okay, thank you. <laughs>